Okay, let's continue on and finish up our geometry readiness test. So we have four little problems here to simplify, and these are all radicals that can be simplified. So um, when we simplify radicals, we're looking for what we call perfect squares. And uh, that would be really nice. Um, and here are examples of all perfect squares. And so 12 is certainly not a perfect square, but how do we simplify the square root of 12? What we're looking for is to break 12 into its factors, and hopefully one of its factors is on this magical list over here. And so the numbers that I'm thinking about uh, is 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And why do I choose that? Because a 4 is on our list. So what do we know? The square root of 4 is 2, so my answer is 2 radical 3. Let's do the next one, radical 8. Well, radical 8 is the same idea. What times what is 8, where one of the factors is on the list, and this one has a 4 again, so uh, this answer is going to be 2 radical 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2 is not simplified. So that is the answer to 2 radical 2. Let's do the next one. It's 8 radical 20. Well, this is going to be 8 times radical 4 times radical 5. What I'm doing in my head is, what times what is 20, where, again, one of these numbers are on the list? And I thought about 4 and 5. So how do we simplify that? That's going to be 8 times 2 times radical 5, and we have to clean that up. That is 16 radical 5. So that's the answer to... 8 radical 20. Let's try the next one. It's radical 75. Radical 75, I'm thinking 25 times 3. Why that? Because 25 is on our list. So in order to simplify radicals, you really have to know your times tables really well. And so this is 5 radical 3, and that is the simplified version of the square root of 75. Let's take a look at the next problem. The next problem, we're not um, well, we have three different terms in here. We have this term, we have this term, and we have that term. And usually when we add and subtract uh, radicals, we need the same exact radical. So if I have 5 radical 3 plus 8 radical 3, that would be 11 radical 3. Oh, excuse me, I just added wrong. Uh, 5 plus 8 is 13 radical 3. So in this case, I see some of the radicals um, are exactly the same. Um, 7 radical 6 and negative 19 radical 6. So altogether, when I combine those two, that's going to be negative 12 radical 6. Well, at a first glance, it looks like radical 6 and radical 24, they're not the same. But we can certainly simplify radical 24. That will be, we just did this, I think, a moment ago. This is radical 4 times radical 6, 2 radical 6. So what do I have? I have negative 12 radical 6 and positive 2 radical 6. Altogether, I have negative 10 radical 6s. And that's my final answer when I add and subtract those radicals. Let's try another one. Well, OK, now we're not adding, subtracting. We're actually multiplying. And the rules here. Um, we just want to take the numbers that are not radicals and multiply them together. I get negative 6. And then when I take the radical 3 times radical 3, let's think about what that is. Radical 3 times radical 3 is actually not a radical 9, and that simplifies to 3. So what's my final answer in here? This is a negative 18. Let's see, we have two more problems left. This one looks like uh, a Pythagoras formula, where it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And they're actually telling us some values for A and C. So let's just fill in the values for A and C into our equation. This is going to be 6 squared plus B squared equals 9 squared. And now I need to isolate B. So this is going to be 36 plus B squared equals 81. And so now I'm going to take the 36 and move it on the other side. I have to subtract 36 to both sides. That's going to be b squared equals, I think that is, 45. Well, what's left to do is I'm going to square root both sides. And when I square root both sides, I get b 
equals plus and minus the square root of 45. But I'm not done because the square root of 45 can be simplified. We've just been practicing that skill. What I see is radical 9 times radical 5. And radical 9 is a perfect square. So when I simplify this radical, this is plus and minus 3 radical 5. And that's the two answers that I get. Here we go. Let's do one last one in here. We're going to use our calculator. Well, I'm going to grab my calculator, which you cannot see. And I am going to enter uh, these radicals in the calculator. So I did 7 radical 10. And then I'm going to subtract 2 radical 13. And what you want to do here is get some practice. And what I get is this number that looks like 14.9. Two, four, eight, and it says uh, round to the nearest tenth. So what I'm going to do is look at that number, and does it affect it? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to leave it as 14.9. So please come to support or uh, M10 to get some help with using your calculator if you cannot get 14.9. Uh, All right, thanks for listening.